Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I am at Rockwood, Ontario, catching up with Deb Campbell from Agronomy Advantage. Deb, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Hey, and so is this corn. This is some nice looking corn. This is amazing looking corn. It was one of the first plantings that we had this year. And uh, we're a full seven leaf stage, knee high, mid June. <laughs> and it's even got some tillers on it, some suckers, some people call them, but you know, it's really a sign that uh, this is established well, lots of resources and well on its way. Yeah, and now the conversation turns to side dress nitrogen, what resources it needs to finish. And yeah. you know, that conversation about uh, nitrogen all, ongoing all winter, obviously nitrogen prices up, softening a little bit. Um, then, you know, you've got corn at eight, 850. How do you take that conversation now? How do you have it now, Deb, regarding, you know, how much nitrogen we can, we can invest in this crop? Well, the beauty of it now is that we're six weeks into the season. So we know how well our corn is established. Um, you know, we maybe had some targets on a crop plan back in the winter time based on those expensive fertilizer prices. This is a great window to reassess and, and do a gut check on that nitrogen plan that we had in place. Mm -hmm. Do we increase it? Do we soften it a little bit? What's the status of this corn today? And you know, it comes down to, in a lot of cases, producers use that number of a pound of nitrogen per bushel of corn, and that's still a good place to start. Um, do we, in fact, have that true yield potential that we uh, were anticipating? And I think in a lot of cases we do. The corn's off to a pretty good start in Ontario. And, um, you know, how much nitrogen is on here? How much mineralization are we getting at this point in time? Um, how much moisture have we had throughout the season? So a really good point in time to do a full resource check of nutrients on corn, whether it's tissue sampling, whether it's nitrate testing, both of those are excellent tools to be able to pinpoint where the season's at. Mm. Let's talk about nitrate t testing. I mean, obviously um, th this year, kind of cool, but, but not too wet. And uh, we're hearing nitrate tests come back as high as 90 parts per million, you know, in, in those manure fields, you know, uh, though after cereal, with cereal rye. How do we, how do we assess those numbers? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, nitrogen's tricky in that it's, it's biologically driven and it's spatially different in the field. Um, and, and, you know, one field's history is different from another field's history. So it's complex, right? And we try to make it as simple as we can. Um, but in a lot of cases, going into a field, taking a soil nitrate test is a good point in time to be able to say, this is how much mineralization of nitrogen we have from those organic sources. And, um, you know, use that as part of the piece of the puzzle to put together that overall nitrogen uh, side dress rate or top up rate that you think you might need. And, um, you know, tissue tests actually are another good way to assess a plant to say, oh, it's, it's, it's well fed at this point in time. Um, but then we, you know, we need to have that uh, crystal ball, that future forecast of how much is it going to need to take this to yield, to take this to grain fill. We know we want to maximize grain fill. So that's taking us right through to Labor Day. And so we're trying to forecast this out three months basically at a time. Um, so yeah, we rely on nitrate tests and doing them spatially in a field to be able to get a representative yeah. number. Now, how do we yeah. do that, Deb? I mean, obviously we've got knolls, we've got high mm. slopes, low slopes. Um, you've got your, your, te your, your core there. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, take us through some tips and, and how we can get a representative sample. Well, so to do a nitrate test and to do it well so that you have reasonable confidence in the numbers that you're getting back. You want to take a 12 inch core in the field. So you're going deep. So if you're on some gravels, that can be a little bit challenging. Sometimes you have to go down the same hole twice to be able to be certain you're getting 12 inches deep. Um, this is a beautiful sandy loam in this farm. So no trouble. It's just like butter to put this probe in 12 inches deep. Um, you want to think about how the field's been managed. So 
um, you know, if you're on strip till versus, um, you know, you know, full tillage, if you're running a high nitrogen starter, you maybe want to take a few more probes out of the row versus between the row. Um, you know, and then look at the spatial complexity of the landscape. So, you know, those, those low slope positions, maybe higher organic matter, um, the knolls where you're lower organic matter, less mo moisture holding capacity, all of that comes together to influence your, your soil nitrate and your mineralization capacity of your field. Um, so we're quite often doing two, three, four samples in a field based on landscape position. And um, that's telling us, you know, sort of the, the, um, the differential, if you will, mm -hmm. from the, the, the low points for mineralization to the optimum points for mineralization. Yeah. So Deb, how do we interpret these high nitrate tests that we're seeing on those livestock manure fields, um, you know, at cereal rye? You know, can we trust that? Right. So we have uh, seen some very high soil nitrate levels uh, coming back from our initial tests. So some things to consider in those scenarios, particularly when we're looking at organic sources of nitrogen, right? So is the test reliable? Um, you know, the timing that it was taken, the, the conditions it was taken in, perhaps you go out and do a follow-up test mm. and verify the number. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, you know, we have seen warmer than normal soils in Ontario since that really warm week uh, in, in early May. And that's really primed the prompt, it seems, to get this mineral rolling. So, um, you know, we have in fact seen some higher numbers. Now the question becomes, does it stay high all season? You know, and, and we, you know, that's looking into the crystal ball and what does that look like in July and August and if there's enough left at the end of the season. So you still need some interpretation with those really high numbers. And, and my personally, I, I would go out and verify the number. It, it doesn't take long to grab another test. Verify, is it still high? Is it holding high? And then you'll have a lot of confidence in those numbers. Now, final question I want to talk about is precision agriculture. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, you know, mm -hmm. you've got the information you need to know about your field. You know, um, from, a, from a precision perspective, from a, a you know, a field variability and, you know, um, you know, what I would call a variable rate perspective, how do we go forward? Right. So, you know, going back to that spatial differentials in the field, um, you know, more and more producers are moving towards zone management. And it really comes down to how have you established your zones in the field? So are you doing them via landscape position? Are you doing them by soil type? Are you doing them by um, off your yield maps and your yield potential zones? basically. So in a lot of cases, when it comes to nitrogen, I like to look at the moisture holding capacity. So I'm looking at soil types, cation exchange capacity, organic matter, and, um, you know, basically water is what drives the nitrogen system, water and temperature, biological system. So I want to make sure I'm accounting for that in my zones when I'm looking at zone management for nitrogen. And then once you've determined those zones, sample by zone, get a base reading, and then um, compare that to your potential yield according to zone as well and set your nitrogen rate based on that information. And roll on and make a great crop, right? Exactly. Oh. Make a great crop. We're looking at, uh, you know, we're looking to match to, uh, 2021's yields, so, awesome. or well, better. Well, hey, with the right nitrogen, we'll get it done. Um, yeah. Deb, great to have you on Corn School. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks, Bernie. Right.